Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And <clears throat> we got her together the way I, I envision it so far. Took some uh, angle iron out of a bed frame. And I'm probably going to get bigger ones because I, I just found another one that's wider. So I'm going to make these bigger. And probably going to make a fancy foot for it too. On all three of them. Well, just. Now I might. Uh, I might make that a surprise. The feet. Well, we've got this far on it. We got the legs, but we're going to change this. We're going to make them a different size. Alright? And. Uh, we're only going to replace these with a wider. I think what I had was this stuff right here. It's a little bigger than that. And I think it'll work nice. And basically what I'll do is when I get up here, I'll just trim that down. And then put a square or a triangle in there and weld it around there. If I'm that good, I might just make, I don't know what I'll use. Might just leave it that way so water goes down all the way out. But I want to use bigger uh, angle iron. And I got to make sure that I can get away to. I got to cut this plug out. And I'll tell you why I got to plug it or take it out. I cannot break that brass free from that for, for nothing. And I would like for that to be on the inside of this channel. Because the inside of this channel is open. So, uh, I need this to be hidden. But I also need it so it doesn't leak. It's brass. And I've been squirting it with oil hoping I can get it to loosen up. But uh, I have my doubts that it will. And I don't want to deform this in the vise because of how hard I would have to clamp it in order to put a lot of pressure on this to break it loose. Impact wrench won't, wouldn't do it. So, you know, I had the impact on it. If an impact won't do it, it's pretty in there. <laughs> but the goal was to just, I'll have to sawzall it off as best I, or close as I can without hitting the metal. And then just take the grinder and finish it up with a new um, uh, disc on it. So that way I can make a little small round plate or square or whatever and put it up on there. And then take this and put it over top of it. And that will be the center. That will set the center. And um, then have these every third accordingly wherever it measures to and uh, I'm gonna have to figure out how to calculate that but we're gonna do a cardboard mock-up mock first so we're gonna get set up for that Now we got to cut two of them out of metal, just like this. So now, find us some metal. That. So now that we've got our pattern ready, I'm 
I'm going to take this, get rid of your pattern scraps. And that's going to be the hinge for each one of them. So now we take and draw that. And you want to put it in a location where you do the least amount of freaking cutting. Alright, so we're over here at the bandsaw, and what I've done, I've taken my fence off, taken my vice clamp off, and I just took and um, clamped it down to the bed, and that way I get the contour, I want to be at the edge of both of these. Alright, that's going to give me an access point to cut from here to here. Same thing here, from here to here from here to here just because I've cleared all that off of there so then once we get this done the next one should break it in half so let's hope for the best Now, the way we're going to cut these pieces right here is we're going to do that with the bandsaw also. We're going to set that right there and we're going to bring this saw down and I'm going to use my chest to guide it and I'm going to eyeball where that blade's going to go. So we're going to put it right there, but the first thing we want to do is we want to equalize it. So we're going to throw the other piece down here on the other side. Alright, that will counter it so that this will squeeze equally against this piece the whole way. And you just clamp and you're tight, tighten your clamp up. Now when you go to start this, you want to start it holding the blade. So I'm holding it up with my arm, or my hand, and we're going to help guide that to start with by taking a wrench and just touching the blade just enough 
and just lightly come down. And just gradually, I mean, just barely let your pressure off. You're acting as the feed. Really, really slow feed. So now what we're going to do, we've got them cut out, just rough cut it, cut it, <laughs> rough cut, and that's what our shape is going to be like, and I've got the clamp on it because I don't want these to move, I want them to be identical to each other. So for now, we've got it clamped in here, and it's a little late for me to be grinding tonight, so we're going to call this a wrap on part two and I'm leaving you guys with it clamped in the vise and when we come back we'll start doing the uh, grinding to grind the, uh, the shape so that's going to be a tomorrow job because it's too late tonight so hope y'all had a wonderful day uh, also I'd like to uh, mention that bison may be moving right now um, we're not sure yet um, so the shop's going to have to be moved if we make this move so uh, we went and looked at a place today and hopefully bison workshop is going to be moving so uh, look forward to that I've been wanting to anyway because uh, I just I like to be prepared for the future and the future doesn't look good so um, I'm thinking it's time for me to move on and try to find a better deal um, you know I'd like to have a place of my own and I've never owned a place well yeah I have I owned a trailer but it basically wasn't mine because I couldn't afford to move it so really <laughs> it's never going to be mine uh, unless I stay there for the rest of my life. And um, we went and looked at it today and uh, I'll show you guys some pictures of it and um, we're gonna try to make a deal. So, wish the uh, Bison Workshop some uh, luck. <laughs> Lord knows I'm gonna need it. I'm gonna need a lot of energy too. Cause every damn thing I have is heavy. I'm just glad that I ain't gotta disassemble the shop. I could just take everything off the wall, set it on the floor, or put it somewhere where it's safe. Pack some stuff in around everything, like a moving truck. And hope the old truck will take care of it. I got 12 leads in my springs. It's an F-350. Uh, actually, an F-350 has less springs, so I would say it's an F-450 or 550, something like that, frame-wise. Uh, got 12 leads in the rear. Uh, my truck was built for pulling the sled at the truck and tractor pole, so I'm pretty certain it's truck will handle it. Uh, all brand new brakes, all brand new bearings. Uh, still got a crappy brake. I've never had a good brake in it, so 
I guess we're going to find out what this trailer's like when we go to pull it down the road. If it's going to be a nightmare or if it's going to go smoothly. Uh, I think I have my weight distributed or dis distributed kind of evenly with the heaviest thing up front, the toolbox. It's about 900 pounds. Um, the lathe is about, um, I think it was like two or three hundred pounds. Uh, and it's kind of in front of the axle. Uh, then I got the steel pile across from it and the bandsaw. So that kind of helps counter that weight. And then I got the mill in the very back. Uh, with tools in between everywhere. Uh, the bandsaw, the router, table saw, all on this side to kind of counterbalance the weight, weight of the left. So, anyway, that's what the bison workshop has to deal with here in the next uh, day or so. We're going to find out uh, if we're moving. You guys have a good one. Later.